episode of the 8-Bit Geek. If this is your first time listening, 8-Bit is a lot like the start of a football season. You know, you get really excited for your favorite team. Week one is starting and you get all your snacks out. People are coming over. It's going to be a great time. Then all of a sudden, no one shows up at the house. Your team loses and you got a sudden case of diarrhea. I'm Jeremy. With me are two men who once got caught and stuck in a football stadium bathroom for the entire game. That's a there's really big bathrooms. How do you get stuck in one of those? Yeah, and what do you mean by stuck? I mean that's I mean that's it's like your you got story. stuck because like uh, in your universe of this happening to us, like, Jer- the Jerverse, the, the Jerverse, like <laughs> we were stuck pooing the whole time. Just, uh just, it's not it's not my story to tell. For the price you pay for football tickets, the last place I'd want to be stuck in is the bathroom. Yeah, or is it like the door got stuck? I mean, it probably was a number of things. You both had to poo. You both were holding hands underneath the toilet. You, the doors got stuck. Uh huh. Started making out in there. I don't know. Making out with who? Yeah, who are you talking about? Each other. What? We've, with never, who? we've never been in with a game with each other. Yeah, I mean, he's in Texas and I'm in Kansas City. Yeah, and fuck the Chiefs. Have to, it would have to be a Cowboys versus Chiefs game. Yeah. And that that's just never gonna happen. Never. Why have we why have we gone to this logical place <laughs> with a fictional story? <laughs> we're just shooting every plot hole down. Yeah, yours. we're just telling you that this isn't your best work. You need to try harder. Not at place. all. I think you should try harder. A little week. make it a little more believable. Like me at a sports he, game, get the fuck out. Right? Unless he's like unless the company's Listen, paying for it and yeah. they have free beer. Right. Excuse me. Or excuse me, free liquor. Right. Hey, motherfucker, he goes to football games all the time. Who? Prove it. Who? You? Me. Gone to FC Dallas many times. Oh, now we're using the soccer vernacular. Haven't been to an FC Dallas game uh since like two thousand fourteen. Since, since the, he blew that guy in the bathroom for the whole game. Stuck in the bathroom. I think it's stuck in the bathroom. Thank you. <laughs> If you I like our slipped fans. and fell. <laughs> oh, now okay, now tell the story. Now See the glo- the glory hole took him to Narnia. <laughs> he was like, you just can't stop after one. What? Yeah, you got to go number two. Never mind. I'll tell you when you get older. Please don't. <laughs> I don't need to know more tells about your twenties. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you like what we're doing, you like our banter, then you can always subscribe to us, listen to us on these following platforms. First of all, Audio Boom. They are our sponsor. They provide our bandwidth, so we thank them so much for that. You can check us out there. You can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio. Uh, anywhere that uh, there's a podcast, we will be. You can also follow us on social media at the 8-Bit Geek. And, of course, every Monday night right here on Twitch where we record live and you can interact with us in the chat. It's great fun. If you can't make it to a live show and you still want to connect with us, you can still do that on Discord. Uh, We have a a, a great community of over 200 people that you can talk to every day. Everybody is very involved. We've got some really cool stuff going on over there. Right now we have a weight loss challenge where we're giving away uh, some cool stuff. Then the whole community is involved. And it's a great time. And if you're looking for friends, if you're looking for somebody to uh, play games with, come on over to the Discord. All the information is on the website at www.the8bitgeek.com and if you're on Twitch right now, look below. There's a link as well. You can even find, there's a watching party in there and so uh, all the guys get together and girls and they get into a channel and they laugh about the show. They they have fun with the show. It's led by a couple of our fearless uh, admins over there. Wait, they're not even admins. Never mind. Huh. There's Caleb. Caleb is over there, and Ed is over there. Yeah, I'm looking right now though, and it looks like they're, they're playing. PUBG. They're the PUBG chat, so they oh, can go well, fuck, fuck them. themselves. Oh. Yeah, how dare they on a Monday night? No, some, okay, well I have my <laughs> now I have my Patreon uh, rant yeah. for Ed this week. Mm-hmm. <sighs> uh, if you like what you're listening to, you can always check out some other shows. And if you don't like this show, there's some other shows. There's Eight Bit Saga, Divas Drop Kicks and Dives, Brainberry Tarts, and Garbage Day. You can go support them. It's great fun. Can I yeah. can I make a quick announcement about Saga? Of course, yeah, yeah. Do it, do it, uh, do it. Okay, it was supposed to be back this week, but uh, my dumbass self left my hard drive at work over the weekend, so I didn't get to work on Saga. <laughs> and then I wasn't at work today, and I won't be at work tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, it how might be late. Like, Huh? How big are those audio files? Um, gigs. 
We record yeah. for six hours, man. Like, no, wow. no, no. I'm just asking from a like a like. Is there any way that um, like you could use like a cloud four, service like instead? Every session requires about 14 gigs. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> that take a long time to, to upload. Yeah. Now, can you show up to work and be like, "Oh, I need my hard drive. Never mind. <laughs> I I'm mean, sick. Like, cough, cough. Maybe, but also like that would be pretty suspicious. But dick move, basically. Why don't you go in right now after we're done recording and snatch it? Mm-hmm. Um, just use your night coworkers and just be like, "Hey, yo, I was sick as shit. <laughs> I was stuck in the bathroom. Ever have that happen that to you? Not a terrible idea, but <laughs> go in there like fucking old Ben Kenobi, like just big old robe over your head, and just yeah. be like, "Don't talk to me. Don't touch me. I'm sick." Yeah. And then on your way out, just let out a huge sneeze, like open mouth. Like, just nothing. Ah, yeah, I'm probably going to sneeze a couple times on tonight's show, so if everyone is ready for that disgusting audio. Turn away. They're used to it with me. No. That's true. Fucking ah. clear your throat on the Mike Jones over here. Cat guy yeah, 1902 thank you for the follow. Sorry, that just came in. Sorry. You ain't got to outs me up, up on this piece. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That's what you sound like. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> well, hopefully that's all over with. Today I took my last uh, my last horse pill for um, this Z pack shit. So, <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's more like this. <laughs> God damn it! Oh, for that one, I thought you were talking about your sneezes. The <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is he like? The uh, like Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> oh, I hope I get some honey. Uh, um, if you if you like what we're doing, and you want to support us even more. There's another way. We give away this show for free every week. Uh, we do it, and we love it, and it's fine. Um, but if you'd like to give more and help the cause, you can over at Patreon. Uh, we don't ask for a lot, but if you want to give a lot, we also take that as well. Uh, all your money <laughs> goes right back. <laughs> all your money goes right back into the show, and um, we we can't thank you enough for all the Patreon members who are. Uh, on that list, we read it out once a once a month, and so uh, you can be a, a, become a part of that community as well, where you get extra content. You get the pre-show, the post-show, and some extra content. We just released a Kevisode for Saga, and we plan on doing some uh, extra content for Eight Bit Eight uh, Bit Horror Fest and all that good stuff. Surprise, by the way, I just mentioned that. Uh, speaking of Eight Bit Horror Fest, Doug, take it away. Oh man, that's coming up really fucking soon. I cannot wait. Right. Uh, Ape and Horror Fest, if you've been listening to the show, you know what we're talking about. If you're new to the show, this is what it is. Every October, we, uh, as a podcast, watch a uh, a couple of scary movies, and then we talk about them. And we're doing that again this year, but we've got more shows involved helping us out. Um, we've got some guest shows like Nerd Foo and Bri Fi Podcast. We've also got some of our own shows like Triple D and Brainberry uh, that'll be also doing some stuff uh, this year for us. This year's theme is Origins. You can see the shirt design next to me if you're watching the stream, that little... Uh, like creature, the swamp thing sort of creature design. Oh, that's our, man, that's, that's our... the creature from the Black Lagoon. Right. I was going to say that, and then I was like, I don't want to be wrong. Fuck it. Uh, so <laughs> um, that's our shirt this year. Uh, the theme is Origins, where we're, we're watching uh, the first, um, like, kind of kickoff movies for certain franchises, like Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So that starts October 1st, goes through the end of the month. Um, Shirts will be available through October 31st, and then they're gone forever. So if you're going to get one, get one now. And they're on sale. So do it at uh, 8bitgeek.throwthis.com. Boom! Boom. Also, other people are contributing. We talk games and movie films with Bill and Steve. Hey, I didn't want to name everyone Kev. (laughs) That was only two more. And then possibly our good friends uh, Windrus and Paul might be uh, contributing as well. Well, they said that before. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know what that means. Well, you're sending them your your old microphone. So. Yeah, so they're going to have some boss equipment to record on. Yeah. Uh, we always love having them. We had Windrus on last year for uh, 13 Ghosts. And for, what was it? Um, what was the other one we had her on for? I don't know, but she's awesome. And we love them both. And it's cool. Is just, this is our favorite time of the year. Yes, it was Young Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Frankenstein. So. But yeah, uh, it's just our favorite time of the year, especially me and Doug's because we love horror movies. And to be able to talk about them for a whole month is pretty magical. So yeah, I good times. It. I love Look it. Out, Kev. What? Really? I mean, I'm the only one here that went to go see it this weekend. You're going to throw, you're going to fucking just leave me out of not being excited about this shit. 
I think you're more excited about the the party than you are actually watching the movies, though. Dude, because you, I fucking yeah. love these are the movies that I love. Like these mm. are the movies that I, I I grew up on, not the fucking porn killing and the fucking porn. what killing. movie have we made you watch ever in the two years that we've done this has been like a, a torture porn, like that sort of that sort of movie. Oh, yeah, because I can show you some torture porn yeah, if you want. No, I'm saying in general. <laughs> Like that new school kind of shit that's been finally phased out um, is what I wasn't into for all those years. But the iconic fucking horror film, I, I, I like these ones. These mm -hmm. ones I can get down with. Like I'm excited. Like I want to go see it because of the fact that, that for that reason, I don't that, like. I don't that like movie will make your butthole spray. I'm just gonna say, especially you, Jer. I've seen you how you acted with The Conjuring, <laughs> but I watched it. You did at Doug's poor expense. No, yeah. <laughs> I mean you watched it like a little bitch. Oh God! Let's play some scary video games, Doug. All right. No, no, no. You. That's fine. Uh, you. Uh, why I you ain't play gonna be a little bitch like you watching The Conjuring. What? Up? Really? We're gonna, get, we're gonna get Doug to play Resident Evil Seven in VR. Front of the fucking keyboard and mouse playing a scary video game because you're like, uh, nope. Don't think so. Why don't you do that? Let's do a stream where you play a scary video Why game. Why are you trying to act all hard up right now? Because <laughs> you're trying to act all hard up. Because you know exactly that you have a fucking Achilles heel as well. Okay? Okay. So, mine my, my, my will make me no little bitch. Damn. Then why haven't you played anything? I don't like scary Cat's video games. It's not, my, it's not like... my genre of games. <laughs> I like Batman. And also uh, like, running I around like shooting people with guns. Turtles. Mm -hmm. Well, looks like we both little bitches. Wow. Oh, hey, by the <laughs> way, happy birthday uh, to... <laughs> Horrible segue. <laughs> happy birthday to one of our fans uh, over in Discord and 8-Bit uh, uh, overall uh, fanatic, Arnold Palmer. Sweaty Arnold Palmer, please. Arnold Palmer is dead, but sweaty Arnold Palmer lives... In all of us. Arnie Arnie Parm Parm? Arnie Arnie Parm Parm. <laughs> Happy birthday, dude. Oh. Mm. Okay, well, that had to happen. Bye, Ed. <laughs> uh, next, we're going to go up and uh, hit up the Misconnection section. Uh, every week, we take real ads from the Misconnection section of Craigslist. We read them in funny voices. They are completely real. We don't edit them in any way, although we do ad-lib a little bit. But we definitely can't make this stuff up. Hey, uh, is Sean around? Oh, what's up, fellas? Hey, Sean. Hey. How you doing, buddy? What's up, man? Oh, not much. What have you been up to? Not much. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Well, what, what, good, talk. good talk. <laughs> no, I, 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 too, am sick. I think that little uh, Ollie bastard got me sick. Oh, sorry. Oh. He's cute, but fuck. Uh, so, since I'm sick, let's get into some of my sick shit this week, alright? This uh, one's for a hot zombie sex role play. <laughs> Trans for a woman. Okay. <clears throat> okay, hold on. I gotta figure out what's going on. Oh my god, what is what is happening? Give me one of those. He's drunk. He's drunk. Whew. I am so serious. Why? Why so serious? Let me yeah, tell why? you. Sex has become so boring. For a while, I was having sex at the power exchange because that was fun. <laughs> I could mix things up. I could do it in public. I could have an audience. It was like putting on a show for everyone else, and I got to be the star. Unfortunately, okay. lately, we've run into reruns, and I'm just not having fun anymore. Oh, fair enough. Let's go to the power exchange together. Let's go to the power exchange together and role play. Oh. 
Let's go to the power exchange together and we'll play hot zombie sex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. I know it sounds really ridiculous, but I've always loved zombies and the undead. And I've always loved sex. So oh, I wanna mix sure. so I wanna mix the two. without having to actually fuck a dead person. <laughs> Additionally, I've seen and am friends with some really cute zombie girls. And I could really enjoy the mix of horror, terror, shock value, and others. And, you know, sex. All right. How, how is it going to be, like, terror? Are they going to fucking try to bite you while you're having sex? Well, I think the audience is going to be in terror. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, God, why would you fuck that dead man? <laughs> Side note, um... How much is the power exchange paying you to advertise them so much? You said their name an awful lot in that paragraph. Anyways, I'll dress up like <laughs> <laughs> I'll dress up like an office professional or something like that in some clothes I don't care about and pretend to be doing some work in an office or something. <laughs> I just got a fucking visual of them sitting in an office chair like do 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 just do oh. office. Oh, oh, Barbara, please help me with these taxes. <laughs> Barbara, they're coming for you, Barbara. I'm coming for you, Barbara. Come oh. on, Kev. God damn it. That was they're not coming that was... on you, Barbara. <laughs> yeah, that, that was... I know the quote. <laughs> it was good because it was zombies and it was sexual. God damn. Sexual zombies. Maybe then I'll listen to a prop radio and look shocked, act scared, peer out a mimed window or something. <laughs> you got oh. very Edgar Allan Poe oh. up in here. Oh, there's a there's a window right here. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> a that's a visual joke for our watchers. Um, um, and then and then you batter on the door. And batter and batter and push and break in. <laughs> what is <sighs> what is batter on a door? That sounds like they're getting ready to deep fry the door. Yeah, I mean it's essentially what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. They just they're just like. And then I let out a blood curdling shriek, and you lunge at me and rip my clothes apart and splatter fake blood all over me. Well, you used to tarp on the floor. To be polite. <laughs> that's that's key. They want they you want to go back to the power exchange. And then proceed to savagely violate me or something like that. I'm not really uh tied to the exact scene, but I think something that goes that way would be fun. <laughs> Jesus. Requirements. You must be attractive. Sorry, I know an attractive zombie. Wait, okay, hold on. Sorry, I know an attractive zombie, but it's possible. Um, what does HWT Dave, mean, Kev? Harry World Potter. <laughs> Harry World Potter. Yeah, what's, what does that mean? Um, Harry, when possible. But he's looking for a female, though. I mean, I guess you could be Harry. Uh... Oh, oh, humping woman power exchange. Power exchange. <laughs> Anyone in the chat know what HWP stands for? I don't like. I don't want to Google it. HWP. I don't want to. Uh, height, weight, proportional? No. Ah. Wait, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's probably it. Let's HWP at dictionary. the very least. Know how to act like a zombie. I am specifically looking for someone with zombie experience. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, if you've been an extra on The Walking Dead, extra points. <laughs> Uh, wow. In San Francisco, I don't think this is asking a lot, but be able to <laughs> look like a zombie. <laughs> if you're good friends with Greg Nicotero, another positive, because maybe he'll do your makeup and give us some fake blood. Nice. This means dressing the part and knowing how to appropriately do your makeup. Don't be shy. You're going to fuck on stage. No, sorry. You're going <laughs> to be dressed like a zombie and growling and growing and spattering fake blood and all else everywhere. In public, to an audience that may not even be that into it. But I bet they will be. <laughs> I'm not posting pictures of me this go-around for obvious reasons. 
what what's the obvious reason? You should know what it is, Kev. I shouldn't have to fucking tell you. <laughs> but if you mail me, uh, you're of course welcome to a ton. I am very pretty. Congre- congratulations, Sean. About me, five six to five seven. Somewhere in there. Uh, uh, 124 pounds, I'm guessing. Yeah, because that's the pound sign. Dumb idiot. Okay. Non-smoker, <laughs> red hair, blue eyes, glasses, 32 Ds. Bam! <laughs> you got some big tennis. Anything else? Ask. <laughs> I am so into this idea. I am primarily looking for a female. Males will be considered, but are not really what I'm up for. If you are, however... A zombie couple, that is acceptable. To that end, uh, trans for male, trans for men, women, uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing from someone. Is that a picture? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, that is a, that's a part of the next one. Okay. Yours truly. Good luck reading that. <sighs> Sean Barbara Penis. <laughs> Fuck, that was awesome. They're going to come on you, Barbara. That's what I wanted to say originally. (laughs) All right. I guess it's my turn. Mm. Oh, no. Hello, boys. Hi, Dr. Savage. Mm, Savage, do what Savage do. What does that even mean? Is that that your new slogan? It's on my business card. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. <laughs> well, here's goes nothing in anime role play and J slash O. I don't know what that means. Male for male. Jerk off? <laughs> oh, yes. That's it. <laughs> Sounds about right. Kevin knows all this lingo. I mean, you know, I, I've I've been around the internet. Looking for another man. Eighteen to thirty. To role play and reenact an anime sword fight. Hmm. Bleach preferred, but if you have one you want, do specifically bring a DVD tape over and if it's doable, naked. You do not have to bring your own sword, I have plenty, but if you want to bring one, that's okay too. <laughs> we'll reenact an anime sword fight while naked taking turns stroking and groping each other between sword swings. First to finish must help the other finish. Hands only, please. (laughs) Serious replies only. There's a photo of me. That's not you. There's no way. (laughs) That looks like Tommy from the Power Rangers. It might actually be Tommy from the Power Rangers. Yeah. (sighs) Also, hands only. Come on, Dr. Savage. We know you. Mm, I'm taking a break from feet. <laughs> Anywho, goodbye, boys. That's a fake picture. <laughs> it's an internet photo. All right, so I'll read this next one, and then uh, Kev, you can you can have the last one, okay? Yay! Uh, this is submitted by Ed. Oh, I forgot to say the last one was submitted by. Which I don't have it pulled up, so I do apologize. I'm, <laughs> so, yeah, so if, I'm so sorry. If you submitted it's, that, he doesn't care about you. Oh. It's, it's half right. <laughs> you have to look it up. Thank you for whoever, whoever submitted it. Thank you. Yeah. Snorkel said it was me. Oh, Snorkel. That's right. Thank you, Snorkel. Snorkel from uh, from the 8-Bit Geek uh, Discord. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> well... <laughs> I got over 400 gallons of regular gasoline willing to trade in Austin. And I'm blessed to have over 400 gallons of gasoline. I don't want money. I'm only looking to exchange up to 15 gallons for anal sex. Oh, no. Be giving it to you. Both men and women are <laughs> welcome. But the men need to be very attractive as that is not my preferred sex. I will wear a condom and use organic lubricant purchased from Amazon.com. 
there will be no filming or photos. I don't want anyone else to know either. So let's agree to keep it hush, hush. If you're interested, send pics so I know if it's worth it. I like how you said photos. Photos. <laughs> like, yeah. so you got really like... Ugh. Turned to like a like a like a valley girl for, for like a hot second. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I for these photos. It's like they, no one will know who you are except for all the people with full gas tanks in Austin <laughs> in the line. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> I was like the chat. Wait, what? <laughs> That's a deal. Wait, what? I'll do it. Wait, huh? I need some fuel. Yeah, it was uh, funny because that was going around like we just had in um, in Texas like a gas shortage or whatever because people just wanted to I don't know some some people were like oh we don't have gas and then everyone was like there's no gas and then it turned to Mad Max for like a couple of days and it got it really did. fucking crazy <laughs> <laughs> so that like that that one got posted that's just fucking funny I want I I you know what there's a problem with to like find out if this if that if this worked did this guy get the butt sex he wanted. For the gasoline that he has. I want to reply to him and ask. Well, hey, <laughs> just curious. <laughs> just wondering. I don't how many do, gallons do you have do, left? Do, do not want to participate. <laughs> Did it work? Asking for a friend. But I do need gas. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kev, you're up. What up, y'all? Velvet in the house. Who? Velvet in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question. Voice. I'm I'm putting a request out there this week. What? I'm sorry. Your voice is sounding real buttery smooth. Is that a new microphone? It is a new microphone. This is a Sure SM7B. Damn, it makes your voice sound so it's sexy. Smooth I, motherfucking seven, bitch. <laughs> I, I like that. I don't know for whatever reason. I can see it on my screen occasionally. The green light from the thing on my hat right here. But yours is like mm-hmm. right in your fucking forehead. It's really funny. Right it's like, there. Yeah, yeah, it's just like bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> I know. I need to put some like tape over it. Just like stop. Stop blinking at me. Couldn't avoid it. Stop it. Stop it. But this one, this one this week goes out to the woman who sent nude photos to my ad. Stop teasing me. Male for women. Hollywood. Boobville. <laughs> That's what we call it on the streets is Boobville, by the way. If you've ever been to Hollywood and you're, you're an insider, you know what it's called. Now, I posted a few times here, mostly to meet this rocket chick with an amazing side boob. Just one, though. <laughs> Even after a good workout, I couldn't get her delicious tits off my mind. <laughs> I've seen a lot of breasts, by the way. Just breast. No, no, no <laughs> multi-breast, just breast. I've seen a lot of it. It, I'm in my 40s and I have an internet connection not like most people in their 40s <laughs> I also live close to several strip clubs that I'm a regular at now that if I wanted to see random titties I could <laughs> but that's not the point of this post slash ad <laughs> now a few hours after I posted some woman with really big boobs sent me a tit shot that's one tit right there keep, keep count Claiming hers were better. Now, granted, they were bigger, and I have met several women who always think bigger is better when it comes to tits or cock, which I've got a few cock pictures in there, too, and I'm not really happy about that. (laughs) But just like I can admit, I don't have the best cock on the planet. You also got to realize the competition for the best tits in the West is going to be stiff. (laughs) They're stiff because most of them are fake. Plus, seeing something in real life, even if they are side boobs, is better than a picture of some nippleless huge ones. Because what's the point? We're all looking for the nip. <laughs> but the big tit queen doesn't respond when I ask to see slash feel her boobs in person. Because, you know, I'm like, I'm kind of blind in some ways. Like, I got to feel my way out of these things. I know where the areola is at. I just got to like round it. Never mind. I'm going to get that. I'm getting too deep into it. So out of frustration, I post another ad requesting the BTQ respond. BTQ standing for big, big tit queen and not disappear like a virgin on prom night. Yeah, you're three for three, man. 
I know my acronyms. And who responds to the request for the busty one? Oh, Miss Green Eyes and Fakies. <laughs> a woman with stunning green eyes and just about as stunning as a set of tits as you can ever ask for. And does she respond to my inquiry? Of course not. She's too busy getting free drinks at the Cabo Cantina from every lush in town with a spare 20 in his wallet and cum in his balls. Trust me, I've checked. It's the feeler, feeler thing. I can, I can, I can feel it out. So I post for old green eyes and fakey, hoping at least if she doesn't respond, then perhaps a woman who actually believes the internet can connect people is more than just pen pals. Nothing. Zilch. Zero. So I want them titties is what I'm saying. So <laughs> that's a long ass post to talk about some tits. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm looking for my BTQ. Are you her? Shoot me back a message. Yours forever, Velva Jones. Boobtown conversations. There it is. <laughs> there we there it is. Uh jumping right into it, man. Uh this week ending I, I guess we can say <sighs> People are saying it saved the summer, but we're kind of officially out of the summertime film kind of mm, time frame. But it has swooped in and made $117.2 million in its first week. Well deserved, too. And the budget was $53 million. So, yeah, they, they made some money on that. There'll be a sequel. It's the largest opening for an R-rated film ever. It mm-hmm. broke every record in the book for fucking September, I think, for opening weekend and all that shit. It's getting a sequel. Yeah. Well, well I mean, yeah, we it, all knew that. It actually <laughs> is literally getting a sequel. They got to finish the story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it yeah, was wh- like the most packed I've seen my theater all weekend. It was nuts. Why were you there all weekend? Well, I live across the street, so I see a lot of activity. Well, how do you know it was like that was the pa- like, did you monitor it or did you talk? There to was somebody? no other fucking movie out there and people wanted to see. <laughs> I'm people just trying were, to, people I'm were trying bringing to their like three year olds to this film, which was hilarious. Every time I heard a kid cry, I laughed out loud. <laughs> There's a lot of people on Facebook asking, like, can I bring my kid to this? Like, yes. Fuck no. If you want to scar your kids for life, feel free to bring them to this movie. Yeah. The thing is, this movie was fantastic. I loved the original, and the original is definitely um it's got a time frame because if you watch it today, it's not nearly as scary as it was back in the nineties. However, this movie pulled no punches whatsoever. This was not a made for TV movie on ABC. They were gory. There was a lot of jump scares. Uh, there was a lot, a lot in this movie, a lot of jump scares. There was one that actually caught me off guard, which was awesome, but, uh, it was a great movie. Highly recommend it. And the kids that are in that movie, are just the kind of caliber like as the stranger kids, stranger things kids where they're all just on their a game and they do a fantastic job. One of them, actually the kid from stranger. Yeah, One of things, them is it's, it's the will and or, he, or the main character. Yeah. He plays not that the, yeah, the main character in uh, stranger things, he plays uh, Richie and he is my absolute favorite in that movie. Every scene he's in, he steals it. He steals the damn scene and he's fantastic. The kids are great. Um, Skarsgård as Pennywise is surprisingly very fucking good and very creepy. Like he actually has Tim he, Curry beat as far as creepiness goes in this film. And I'm not going to spoil why, but you'll see it and you'll be like, yeah, I can see, I could totally see why this guy was fucking creepy. And I loved every second of it. I've watched a couple interviews with him outside of his makeup and, uh, mm-hmm. he's just creepy anyways. Yeah, people were saying like they would have loved to see him play Joker after this, just because of his kind of the face, uh, his the, his face shape and the kind of well, the he's just typecasting. maniacal, yeah, yeah the a- maniacal way he brings his character to screen. But yeah, yeah go see it. Pennywise was fantastic. Um, like I said, it just they pulled no punches as far as like this is a hard fucking R movie. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the band or the movie now? There's a band called Hard R. Oh, Pennywise. Yeah, go see them too afterwards. Uh, Pennywise was awesome. Whoa, oh, oh. I want to see. I want to see Pennywise. I haven't seen Pennywise in years. Don't get me started. Yeah, Ride the Spy Guy is going to pop in here, and we're going to start talking about punk bands again <laughs> and bore the shit out of everyone in this room. Yep. Um, I've been listening to the audiobook again. Um, nice. It's forty-four hours long. I think I have forty hours left. 
Mm. But like, it's crazy because like not not much has happened. Yeah, it's the first like the first few like part. The first part is like the stuff that happens in, in the book. I don't I don't know if the new movie takes place this far back, but in 1957, with, no, uh, with Georgie. So what what this movie does is it kind of modernizes it because it takes place in the eighties, approximately like, like like 27 years before today. So that way when the sequel comes out, it'll be a modern day sequel. So you're seeing, yeah, you're seeing uh, it starts in 88 and 89. So between 88 and 89. So that means 27 years from now will be like 2018 or 2017 or whatever. So bad math, dude. I mean, that's kind of bad. It's bad bad math. math. 1990 would be 27 years from like from now, or not not from now from then. Yeah, like but today. remember, it's gonna take them like a year or two to. Okay, but I'm saying like they could set the movie in 26, 2016 if it's 1988, or even then it would still be 2015. But it's just bad. You're just bad at math. Hashtag. Hex. Well, yeah, I'm a product of Chicago <laughs> well, education. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> just Chicago public schools. Yeah. I just found out what a hexagon was today. I I just learned what a hexagon was earlier today. Listen, I've lived in an alley. I played with cans. (laughs) My daddy ate too much. I had bottles as as a fucking uh, money to turn them in, and they gave me change. Hey, fuck you guys. At least I knew there wasn't a South Detroit. There is a a a South South Detroit. Detroit. (laughs) (laughs) Next time you guys go to Detroit. Go hang out in South Detroit. Let's see what happens. Oh, my God, Kev. We're going to go through this every fucking time. Listen, just because there's not a place that's necessarily called South Detroit, there's a southern part of, of Detroit. So suck my left nut, you fucking ginger not bitch. Right now you're sick. <laughs> you're sick right now. I, don't want to get I am going to. Um, that's it. With the rest of the this year's uh, Patreon funds, I'm bu- <laughs> buying plane tickets for Doug and I. We're going to make a fucking flag, and we're going to plant that flag. <laughs> Called South Detroit, <laughs> yeah. right round, right on the fucking river, right on the bank of the river. Like th- this is where. Hey, guess what? This is the southern point of of Detroit. South Detroit, suck my left nut, Kev. And then we're is gonna- they going to say all that on the flag? Yeah, <laughs> everything all on the flag. And then we're going to take a photo of it, get on the plane, and come home. Yeah. And I'm going to claim it's photoshopped. And we're going to bring. <laughs> we have to bring the flag back because we probably can't leave that yeah. there. Yeah, that's that's littering. <laughs> I'd pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Star Wars and Marvel films are officially moving off Netflix. To update you, a couple weeks ago, we talked a little bit about how uh, Disney was making their own streaming service, and uh, it will be successful because of the kids. Mm-hmm. Now it'll be more successful because Star Wars and Marvel films will only be available on that streaming service. So, um, I feel like this is only going to hurt the cause for the regular consumer uh, ages um, 16 to th- th- 35 death oh. uh, because everyone's going to fucking just download that shit now because they're going to be like, all right, well, I can't fucking stream it. Yeah, Fuck I you. mean, it, it, there will be a group. Okay, so like 16 to probably 23 to 25 just as it will probably not, or whatever that like 16, 24, whatever that age group is sort of like mm-hmm. won't use it. They won't. Mm-hmm. But then you're gonna get to like 25 and to 25 to 35 will use it because a lot of them will have like kids, mm-hmm. and then 35 after won't use it because um, fuck it. <laughs> uh, but, That's what's gonna say on then, the quotes. But then like maybe uh, 65 on may have it also because grandkids <laughs> or some shit. You know what I mean? But like yeah, no. I'm like this is stupid. This is stupid. Yeah. I'm gonna go download it. Fuck you, Disney. I'll pirate your shit. I don't give a fuck. Uh, say it. Deb from Brainberry brings up a great point. What is this going to do for the Marvel shows on Netflix? There's been uh, no announcement so far. Uh, that's still the big question. Those uh, will probably is... stay on Netflix. Those are Netflix properties. Yeah, he didn't he didn't mention anything in the announcement, but I'm sure that there's still loopholes in there, and they could probably pull those over to the Disney streaming service as well. I don't know. Yeah. Net- Netflix paid for those. Nef- you know, those are Netflix. well. They paid for they paid for the ones that are already in the can. That's not to say that. Because each each season, Netflix renews each season, right? So, if, if it's only the contract's only good for each season, they could then you're like, saying once they finish the season, then they're just going to move the show. Season, they could just be like, "All right, well, season four of Daredevil is on Disney." I feel mm. like that will probably stay on Netflix because they are a little more adult, and I don't think they want that on a service where then you have to make another kid friendly version of something. 
You know what I mean? Like, Possible, like, yeah. like how Netflix right now has like the kids stuff where you only access the kids shows and movies. Right. Whereas, you know, like Disney, like that's kind of their whole thing. So I feel like the Netflix shows that are darker and stuff will definitely stay over there. Because there's some darker Disney movies. There's some of the Marvel and Star Wars, I guess, can be dark at times. I mean, mm-hmm. but like in comparison to T- Teardevil or Punisher, right? Oh, God. Yeah. Or even Luke Cage. There's some sexy scenes in Luke Cage. Yeah, also in uh, Defenders. There's that part where they he breaks they break that table. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a little bit more news on what happened with the director of Episode 9, uh, Colin, is it Trevorrow? Uh-huh. Uh, he has, uh, obviously everybody knows this, he's been kicked out, um, kicked to the curb. He directed Jurassic World. And so there's a couple different theories out there. Some people, uh, some, and so here's some quotes for you as to, to try to clear it up for you. Uh, Vulture has spoken with someone familiar with the production of both the Book of Henry and Jurassic World, and their source provides some insight as to why Colin left Star Wars. During the making of, of Jurassic World, he focused a great deal on his creative energies on the assertion of his opinion, the executive explains. So it's an executive, okay. Uh, but because he had... He has been uh, personally hired by Spielberg. Nobody could say you're fired. Once that film went through the roof and he chose to do Henry Tomorrow was unbearable, he had an egotistical point of view, and uh, he was always asserting that. So, And the other quote is that um, Kath, uh, Kathleen Kennedy is the gatekeeper of Star Wars, and mm-hmm. what she got, uh, what she do, uh, her word goes. So fuck you if you're not going to play ball. Yeah, I mean, we've kind of seen that again with the with the the, the, the Han Solo film, where it's like the two directors were making a, a kind of slapstick dumb Han Solo movie, and she didn't. That was mm mm mm. But you know, I I trust her. She's worked with Lucas for and Spielberg for years on like mm-hmm. Indiana Jones and and all of their like those franchises dating that far back, and like Star Wars and all this stuff. She fucking knows these movies, and she knows this all this stuff about them. She's been a part of it for so long. Like, I would rather have her make these tough calls where it's like, yeah, you've been working on the movie for the past year and a half, but I don't like what you're doing. I don't like your attitude. Your attitude is not Star Wars. Your attitude is not Disney. Fuck off. Like, I, I would <laughs> rather I, I would rather that. And then, I don't know. You know, I don't... Because we had George Lucas direct three... <laughs> like, well, four, I guess, of the total movies. But, like, the last three, the, the, the prequels... And he had that point of view, that kind of that that kind of directive style, where it was like, "This is my movie. I'm going to mm-hmm. do what I want, and no one would tell him no." And we got three mm-hmm. shit fuck movies, man. It just the worst. Did you ever watch the documentary of that of the making of those, or like they 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 show the behind the scenes where he's saying something, and everyone's just like, "Yeah, that sounds great." And then there there's that one guy who looks at the camera and is just like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a very like Jim from the office moment where it's just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like it was like this guy knows <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no um, but yeah that was his that was his problem is that like but you know because you could say like you know George did do a lot of things to change and revolutionize the movie industry the fact that like the the prequels kind of pushed filmmaking to the digital era of, of mm-hmm. how they film stuff with digital cameras as, as opposed to film which some places still obviously do film and film, but a lot, a lot of these new blockbuster movies are done digitally because um, mm-hmm. it's so much easier to edit that shit later. Um, but he was super egotistical about it. You know, it was like, again, like look at this mega franchise, the biggest movie franchise in the history of film ever, ever. Like, I'm going to do whatever I want, and no one told him no. So I'm glad that Kathleen Kennedy has the balls to say no, even though yeah. she'd had the balls to say no to him originally. But mm-hmm. but now it's her thing. So again, like I'd I'd rather her have like the, I don't know I don't know. I think she's I think she's doing a, a, a fine job. I think I think the the case and in, uh, in the point here is that you have young directors who had a, a huge success. No yeah, one movie. They, yeah, and they thought that they're fucking um they, they were too big for their britches, and they mm-hmm. thought they were the hot shit. They could do what they want, and then they ended up being brought back down to earth and saying no, you cannot. And then when you know push come to shove. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Well, I'm just curious who they're going to bring in. Because, you know, they start off the, the franchise with J.J. Abrams, like, you know, one of the, like, right now, one of the biggest directors in, in Hollywood. But then they moved to Ryan Johnson, who, again, has some other, like, pretty big movies under his belt, but obviously not as big as J.J. Abrams. 
and then they Let's went with Colin Trevorrow, who only had like really Jurassic World. So I'm just curious mm-hmm. who, if they're gonna. Uh, there's a part of me they seem to really get along with Ryan Johnson. They can't stop singing his praises for Episode Nine and what he mm-hmm. got. I wonder if they're going to bring him back because I don't see I think- why. I don't see why not. He, he said no for right now. He said no. Yeah, he there. He he made an announcement. He was like, "No, I'm I'm not going to do episode nine. Now yeah, we'll see if that paycheck is big enough. Like, and also, <laughs> yeah, like it may be like, well, I I finished this. I I I have this that I'm going to work on now with the money that I got from doing this. I mean, who who knows? But or you know, do you bring in another direct another small time director, or do you bring in another Ron Howard? Do you go? Do you reach out and you and you hire another like big name director to to finish this franchise or, or this this story? I don't know because I like you know bringing in Ron Howard was, was a, in my opinion, a crazy move. Mm-hmm. The comparison to who they had before, like I mean, Ron Howard does comedy with like Arrested Development and stuff, and he does it really well. But <laughs> the the Lego Movie guys and the the Twenty One Jump Street guys, it's just it's such yeah. a, it feels like such a flop because a, a, a flip flop just because of the other movies <laughs> that that he has that Ron Howard has directed. Just it's just it's so different. <laughs> back like Backdraft or whatever. <laughs> Just these adults, but he's gonna he's gonna add that drama to it. Like he's gonna bring back the humanity to it. And well, he's, gonna, he's a good director. He's gonna balance it. Yeah, I can't wait to see who Tom Hanks is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll always find a place for Tom Hanks. <laughs> so, um, did you guys did either of you guys ever get the movie pass? No, no. no um, well, it's still going on. You still have time, and if you do, there is a delay. Of two to three weeks due to unprecedented demand. <laughs> how, well, I mean that is a good deal. That, uh, shit, yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you not fucking, how, how do you not know that was going to happen when you fucking charge nine ninety nine? So mm-hmm. I guess uh, Mastercard can't produce the cards uh, fast enough. Oh, like the physical cards. Physical cards. Oh, way to pull a Nintendo there. Oh, we didn't think demand was going to be that high. <laughs> we only made a hundred. <laughs> We only thought a couple people would sign up. Oh, sh- Great. Now they're going to show up on like eBay for way overpriced, triple oh. the price. <laughs> uh, so that's your update. So if you want to get one, expect a little bit of a wait. Uh, okay. So this summer, here's a little bit of a, of a rant um, topic. This summer, all the major studios are blaming Rotten Tomato for a terrible uh, performance, right? Rotten Tomato has given away a lot of terrible scores this summer, and the movie industry seems to think it's their fault that the movie's bombed. <laughs> Why wouldn't you take responsibility and just say you made a shit movie? Yeah. I like, agree. that's that's how Rotten Tomato works. If you make a good movie, you're going to get a good score. Yeah. I... Yeah, case, like, of, case in point, back in the day, there was no one there to call them on their shit besides yeah. like hoity toity critics. Now everyone's a critic, which is, you know, it's a gift and a curse at the same time. But the fact that is there's more people that can weigh in on whether this movie is good or not. And a lot of, I would say, unbiased folks. So well, here's the thing. Um, you know what the executives think is a surefire hit like Transformers the last night in Baywatch. And those are surefire hits. Back in the yes, back. Did you know that in 2014, the last Transformers movie was the number one movie of the uh, um, in America the, or the uh, world? Because that shit sells like hotcakes in China. In Hot cakes. Uh The box office was number one at the box office for that year. Uh, I was looking at the number ones, and I was very surprised by that. But they tanked, and directors and producers and everybody is saying that. Rotten Tomato is the destruction of our business. That's what Brett Ratner said, who is terrible anyways. Yeah, Brett Ratner can suck a dick. God, why is he still relevant? I think it's a fact that it's a bad movie, and nobody wants bad movies anymore. I think that you you look at good movies, and they're doing amazing. You look at a bad movie, and people know they're fucking bad. Nobody wants to go see that shit and spend their money. You're asking people to spend anywhere from $40 to $80 to go Mm -hmm. out on a date or with your family to go see a film for an hour and a half to two hours. Nobody wants to make that investment anymore if it's going to be a terrible fucking movie. So you can't sit there and blame a website who aggregates um, scores based on reviews that that's the reason why your movie is terrible. Your movie is terrible is because you've hired a shit writer, 
to crank out a script in two weeks. Then you got it produced. You got it made for a little fucking mo- bit of money. You threw a hundred million at it, and you're like, "This is going to be uh, a, a billion dollar movie." Uh, and and then and then you let it out into the world, and you expect what? That it's the fucking '90s where no one reads that shit, and they just see the property and go, "Oh yeah, let's go fucking see it. This right. is going to be great." Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and Ant says in the chat, she says, she says we can watch bad movies on Sci-Fi for free. That's so true. Movies that are sadly or... coming true, like Sharknado. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just it, it's uh, it's the world we live in where people don't want to take responsibility for their actions, and everyone wants to. Here's the thing: I I have this huge problem, and I've noticed it more when I was like a like a teenager and like in churches and stuff. There was this attitude of like everything, everything you did is great. Everything is perfect. Like, oh, you're such a good singer. Oh, you're such a good performer, or whatever, whoever, whatever. And I'd be like, no, they suck. Like, why are you blowing this person's like ego up when they're not good? And I feel like that's the same problem we're seeing now. Is like, it's it's that participation trophy sort of syndrome where it's like, oh, right. you did a good job, job, Johnny. You you showed up, but like, you know, and uh, I'm starting to see that like bleed over into other industries. It's like I don't know if it's our generation or generations below us, where it's just like, stop. Like, thinking that everything you do is gold. Like, I don't care what your fucking mother told you. Your movie was shit. Your writing was shit. Your book was shit. Whatever. Like, I don't know. People get so offended when it's like, oh, but oh, it's not me. It's Rotten Tomatoes. They gave me a bad review. And so that drove people away. Like, no, dude, you made a bad movie. Like, Baywatch, get the fuck out of here. That movie looked like shit from the beginning. And, like, Transformers, dude, we're over it. <laughs> stop. Mm-hmm. Stop. And then even <clears throat> then, you've got the new Alien Covenant. It was better than Prometheus, but not by much. Like, it was just... People again letting people make shit movies and then being like, "Why? What? It's Alien. How did this fail? Why did this do as well as we wanted it to?" Because it's not good. He didn't even make the best Alien movie to begin with. So, Amen. Amen to that. All right, let's get into some gaming talk. Um, anybody got any new games? I got a new game. What'd week. you get? I got Injustice Two. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting for that to come out with like a here's all the characters in one version. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because... I, I jumped on the deal. I really wanted to do that because like they just announced Spawn. Mm-hmm. Oh, that'd be cool. So I didn't. OK, so I didn't think I was going to need the ultimate package because I was just like, oh, the base players will be fine. Right. Mm-hmm. But they have done um, a fantastic job of pulling you in and wanting you to keep playing. I have not played a fighting game this much uh, since like Mortal Kombat back in the day. You get you level up your character. You get mm-hmm. all pieces. Um, you get armor for your arms, legs, and all that shit. Everybody knows this. Uh, so it keeps you coming back for more and more. And the story, I know a lot of people said that the story for the second game isn't as strong as the first, but I got to fucking disagree. I am so invested in this story, and it is so well told and done I fucking love it. I think it's a fantastic uh, storyline. It's so good. Cool. Yeah, I want to play that storyline. I'm terrible at the actual fighting aspect of it, but I loved the storyline in the first Injustice. So I really want to wait till the price goes down to pick up the story for this one. So that's cool. I, I mean, it's good to hear. Yeah, I picked it up for 20 bucks, so I couldn't say no. Nice. So. Well... Uh, this week, before we get into the big one, um, I was I got a review copy of Sign uh, Sign Mora EX, or it might be Sin Mora X, but it is a uh, it was previously a Vita game. It's mm-hmm. a side scroller shmup, like shoot 'em up. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was playing that yesterday. Streamed it a little bit. It's really fun. Uh, it reminds me of a game back in the day that was on PlayStation One called Einhander, which is a side-scrolling shooter with some 3D elements to it. A uh, really fun game. Uh, it's done in part by Grasshopper Studios, which is a Suda Fifty One studio, and it was really fun to play. The people who were watching were having a good time with it. But really cool boss battles, some hell like bullet hell type game, just. Uh, really good, really good game. But yeah, we got a review copy of it, so I thought I'd try it out. It was on PS4. Uh, it's also on Switch, and it's originally from the Vita. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. I just got a. I just checked. You reminded me to check something, and uh, we just got approved for a review copy of Baja: The Edge of Control. I can't. We can't say oh, anything cool. about it because it's under embargo. But yeah, we can definitely uh, test it out. Nice. That's cool. That's cool. It's a remake of the original from the uh, 360. No, it's PlayStation 3. Yeah. 
360. Yeah, and 360. Was it 360 as well? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty cool. But the other, the other big game that you guys didn't get to play yet because it's not on a PC, but Destiny 2 finally came out, and that's been consuming my week. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I know everybody's playing it, but is it worth it? Is it going to is are Doug and I who didn't play the first ones? I played it a little bit, but Doug didn't play the first one. Uh, are we going to be interested in it? Is it going to keep our attention? It's a lot easier to pick up and play uh, than the first one was. And the story, they'll they'll get you up to speed on the story pretty quickly. The best thing about it is the story mode in this is leaps and bounds better than the first one. The first one, the story was non-existent let's be real here there's there was more cutscenes in like one mission in this one than there was in most of destiny one so there's a lot more story in it uh it took me about eight to ten hours to complete the story missions and mm-hmm. then with side missions and everything like that there's still a ton of stuff to do a lot of end game content which is really what destiny is made for uh it's once you beat the game is really when you start the game if you know what i mean like because there's so much content that they add week to week that'll mm-hmm. keep you playing I'm having a blast with it. Uh, we beat the game two days ago and I've just been doing all kinds of other missions, trying to get my power level up there or light level. Uh, I think right now max is like 300. I'm at 255, but we're having a blast and we actually have our own clan on there that, uh, Jeremy made back in, like when we were able to. So eight bit geek does have a clan. You could find it in our discord chat. You could find a link to it, but it is the eight bit geek clan. And the cool thing is it involves all three consoles, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. And if if everyone contributes, everyone gets something out of it. Like, or even people who are just in the clan can get like engrams just for other people completing things. So it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, I know Snorkill's been playing it. Uh, Windrus and Paul have been playing it. I'm trying to think of who else. Like, there's a bunch of people in our in our Discord that are playing it right now. You guys will be playing it. But you still haven't answered my original question. Will Doug and I... I said yes. I said it's a lot easier to pick up. Okay. But the thing is, it's... I mean, it's got the des- it's got the division feel to it, where you know you can't you're gonna, it's going to take a couple headshots to get somebody down, but it's a lot better than the first one. You're not going to spend like two hours fighting one boss or anything like that. That's good. Yeah, uh, yeah. but I love of, it so far. Speaking of the clan, let's move on to the next story. Bad <laughs> segue. Bad, no, that's a good segue. Are you kidding me? That's funny. <laughs> um, PewDiePie, 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 PewDiePie is back in trouble. As usual. And this time, um, you know, fuck this guy. Too yeah, rich to care. Fuck this guy. So he was playing PUBG. He was streaming it. Uh, did you guys watch the, his uh, clip? That no. so he said he dropped the n word. Like he dropped it. Like he he, he dropped it. Like he said it many times he before. He dropped it. Like he was talking to a friend, and it was like, a hard R on it though. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like you could argue it if it wasn't a hard R on it. You could be like, oh no, you know, I was just being like, I don't know, you know, I don't know. There's like that. I was trying to talk. Like, I'm a gangster or some shit, sort of, you know, that sort of bullshit or whatever. Like, excuse. But it was a hard R. Yeah. Yeah, this was very racial. Uh, it was, this was, I think that this should hurt his image, and I think it should fucking, I, I think he should need, go go fucking away, man. Go away. Yeah. Piece of shit. Uh, well, which, he's not. And the sad part is, I mean, he influences so many younger, he's got such a younger audience that they're going to, they're going to pick up on that positively unfortunately and they're gonna start that shit and that's the unfortunate part it's like you can be a piece of shit just don't be a piece of shit when you're such a like a huge influence you know especially on younger people people who don't know any better but it it has started to affect him a little bit at least with game studios um there's been one that's come forward and is like if no one's gonna fucking do something i will Mm -hmm. so the creator of firewatch has started to do a dmca takedown of everything that PewDiePie has done with that game. And he says, I'm not going to fucking stand for this. Um, I'm not going to, you know, what, 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 some of these, I'm sick of this child getting more and more chances to get, to make money off of what we make. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's worse than a closet racist. He is a, um, a propagator um, of despicable garbage that does real damage to the culture around the industry. I agree with him. I, I fucking Colin started watching this guy and I said, absolutely not. Good. I, 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 cause I, I, every time he 
goes on YouTube, you know, he he can only watch certain people, and uh, they have to have a positive. He has to. They have to have a positive influence, or he has to be learning something. That, yeah. That's mm-hmm. the rules of YouTube. Because yeah, good call. not. If not, then uh, out the fucking door because of the fact that it's nothing but garbage. Um, so I, was, I walked in his room one day. I said, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, I'm watching this new guy. I was, uh, everyone else is watching at school. And I said, oh, that's PewDiePie. Turn it off. <laughs> yeah. like, there was no there was no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Like, fuck that guy. No. He's terrible. He's just fucking terrible. Yeah. Um, in the chat, we'll, we'll talk a little bit with the chat in a second also. Uh, Bam says, I don't think it should hurt his image so much as it should own it and create a positive change by positively changing. The problem is with that ban is that like he has done this before. He's had yeah. similar issues with his like white supremacy bullshit and him saying the N-word and doing this stuff before. And he clearly hasn't changed anything because he keeps doing it. So at this point, it's, I feel like it's kind of like, dude, you okay? Okay, he, ha- I, I, I would agree, would have agreed with you, like a year ago when that other shit was happening. But now it's a year later, and, and he's still doing, and he's still, he's still doing that. So I don't know. Um, he waited for the heat to die down, then he fucking heated it up again. Yeah, and then he did it right. Yeah. Um, and then like, who's to say he's not going to do it again? You know, Snorkel says that's dumb. The game it'll open more doors for the studios to take down uh, other let play channels. Okay, maybe. Like right, like reason why they don't do it right now is because like why like, why would you? Because you're that's getting the popularity of your game out and stuff. Like the reason why we play PUBG is because streamers play PUBG and it looks like fun mm-hmm. and it is fun. But like we wouldn't know about it otherwise. But if if that person is creating content that is like racially charged or like is hate speech or and and or in, in any sort of way, the the creator of that game should have every fucking right to tell you not to post that shit. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, don't do not associate me, my game, my creation with with this bullshit that you're spouting. Now, I'm not saying necessarily in his case that like he's on there like being a full, you know, like in a white hood and stuff. But I'm saying like if that's how they that's next, yeah, like <laughs> if if that were to happen or if there was someone out there who was just being just a racist piece of shit or whatever, then no, I, I feel like the game any game studio should have the ability to put that action against that channel and have them stop using their stuff. I mean, it's anyone else can do it. Yeah. And I mean, there's no difference between that. What Doug is saying is what advertisers do. Advertisers will not associate themselves with anything that's going to hurt their image or brand. Mm -hmm. So it's no different than any, than any game studio, not wanting that kind of, uh, that kind of publicity, um, for them. And so, um, is this going to affect him? No, he's got fuck you money. So it doesn't matter. Like he could, he could be taken off the internet today and he's fine for the rest of his life. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that more companies need to step up and say, uh, no, here's the fucking line and you crossed it and we need to teach you a fucking lesson and you can't, you, you don't control us. So a band says it's a breach of his contract for YouTube also, isn't it? Depends on where he was streaming. If he was over on Twitch, then it wasn't on YouTube and you can't, YouTube can't do anything about it. If he didn't, mm-hmm. if he didn't put the clip on YouTube, then that's out of their hands. They can't, they can probably recommend him, yes, but at the same time, if, if there's some contract issue and it wasn't on their channel, if he didn't stream to YouTube, then I don't know if they could do anything about it. If he did it on there, then again, he could just be like, well, did it, you know, it was just a slip of the slip of the speech, slip of the tongue. I didn't mean to say it. Tongue. It's, yeah, right. I didn't mean to say it with such passion. Yeah, with that <laughs> fucking hard R. Yeah. Clear as day. All right, moving on. Uh, we talked a little bit about Destiny 2. Uh, Kevin mm-hmm. did. It has already reached 1.2 million concurrent players, which is in a weekend. That shit has to be a fucking um, record because that it took uh, it took on at least on PC it took Player Unknown uh, two three months to get a million mm-hmm. months five something like that. How long has that game been out? Yeah, know. but that was kind of a word of mouth game. And I know, but like this is like to have concurrent like your sales have to be your sale like. In order to get a one million concurrent, the uh, battlegrounds had ten million copies. Concurrent. Concurrent. Okay, I was wondering what you were saying. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and so, uh, ten million copies sold of that game. So that just goes to show you, like, m- is it's possible that Destiny Two has hit those numbers already in a weekend, right. which would be insane. So I can't wait to see what what that's like. Um, here's some. <laughs> okay. See, this is I I feel this is how you uh, deal with um, race in a video game. Okay, <laughs> South Park has yeah. announced that uh, the game becomes harder 
when you play the black character. Well, it's when, you, when you choose the level of, of how choose, hard the game is, it makes your yeah, skin darker. It, it changes your skin color depending on how far you, sl- you slide the difficulty scale. Yeah, right. Which right. is funny. Now, apparently, when they, I think they said like the combat is not necessarily harder and stuff. It's just like right. other things are. I don't know what yeah, that like means. Don't as much money. Yeah, and we'll treat you differently. <laughs> which yeah, we'll we'll find out when the game comes out. But yeah, I mean, once again, it's. It's South Park. It's, you come to expect. Yeah, it. it's it's in their line of humor, but also the the thing that like makes it funny. Like, I mean, is it offensive? Sort of, but it, it's it's in. It's also it's also of, like real life, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, that's what I was gonna say. It's calling out the yeah, real it's calling issue. Out what the actual issue is, and so what's funny is that you see these people like uh, I was seeing someone Reddit today where it was just like, uh, if you're offended by the um, the the South Park game, you're, you are most likely the problem. And it was all these white people that were like, I'm so sick of this saying that white people have it easy. My life yeah. is so hard. And mm-hmm. it's like, no, you no, you might have, I mean, yes, you may be having personal struggles that are difficult. I get that. But I swear to God, you're, no, you're the overlying. Yeah. Structure. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> Everything in your life has been significantly easier than, than um, your black neighbor. I promise you. So that's true for all of us. Like, you know. mm-hmm. so I don't, I don't know. So yeah, it was just all these white people just getting all bitchy about it. Just like, this is so racist. I'm so offended. My life is hard too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm about to trigger Doug. Oh, here we go. Uh, <sighs> so the Nintendo switch. Uh huh. <laughs> What's wrong with gonna, it? It's going to have supply issues this uh, holiday. What? Oh, I better get my switch now. Hold on. Here's the quote. Nintendo boss says switch supply issues are complicated because they deal with multiple components. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was a nothing oh, answer. Man. <laughs> um, he says, are we going to have enough this holiday season? That's our focus is get the fuck out. It's been a year. Uh, when did it come out? Cause you've had yours. You like had it March. well before. March, right? Like March. Okay, so it will be a year because yeah, you, we had them in time for uh, almost, for yeah. Elmo City. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the... yeah. how? Mm-hmm. How? Because mm-hmm. they're spending all their production on a Super Nintendo no. virtual console. No, there's no, no tech in here any different than what's in the goddamn iPad. Yeah, no. It's, this is not a. We don't have enough. This is them drawing and like pulling in the numbers to be the number one selling console of the holiday season right now three months in advance because I wouldn't say the number one, I would say the hardest to find. Well, that's what I mean. Like the one, like the, the like they're going to be sold out. They're, they're going to be, we were, we, you couldn't find one of ours. Everyone wanted our console so badly. You couldn't find it anywhere because it, everyone wanted it when it's no, mm-hmm. you fools are deliberately underproducing your consoles to try to make it look like you're hot shit. Yeah. It, it's agreed. It's, it's agreed. like, I, at what point do these idiots realize that we know what they're doing? <laughs> Like I've been calling oh, it out for years. Well, they'll never know. No. Yeah. We we get it. You're full of shit. That's why you can go fuck yourself, Nintendo. And I've been saying oh, that. Oh, I for thought years. you were aiming that at me. <laughs> I was like, damn, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> um good. What okay, uh Jeremy, as a Switch owner, mm-hmm. what do you think is like I mean, this is being real. This is not ripping on Nintendo. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, no. I but, have an open mind about it. I'm in, like I said, I, up until the switch, I've, I've owned every Nintendo system. I've always backed that up. I was just not going to fall for the one game system this time. And now I am eventually, but what is the, what do you think is a rare component on that? So where do you think that would be holding up the Uh, warehouse? Nothing. There's not a component on that. There's not a component in the system. Uh, that is a, uh, the only thing that's proprietary is the actual, um, uh, plug that goes into that's the HDMI converter. Okay, that's well it. that's that's HDMI that's on converter. Why is it like a mini HDMI or what? It's a it's so it's so that way you can't uh, hack it and build your own dock. And so that's the only proprietary. Oh, okay. Any, anything else? Um, all the components in that are n- just Nvidia chips. Okay, because I've read that it uses a USB C to charge. Yeah, but that's I mean that's everywhere. That's on every. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Account. Like I'm saying, it's it's surprising because um, they normally they have their own proprietary chargers. There's been t- uh, there's been teardowns of the controllers. Those are all built with really cheap um, uh, Bluetooth 
um, um, what are they called? Antennas. Yeah. Um, it's just plastic, so that's all you can knock that out. The screens are everywhere. Like that's not a that's not a special screen. It's not OLED. It's nothing like that. Yeah. Um, so there's not one thing. The technology in this in this box is probably anywhere from three to five years old, and I don't. I don't see how it's a component issue. Uh, in the chat, somebody says, uh, what do you think, uh, how much of this is iPhone? Um, you know, it's not. Like Foxconn is a huge company. They have a, they have a, uh, they build products for everybody. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is just a matter of, of supply chain. Um, they just, they, like Doug said, they're just not producing in, uh, a lot of them because what they want to do is they want to build up a whole pox, uh, uh, um, Stockpile. Uh, stockpile. Uh, they want to push it out on one certain date. Once they all sell out, then they can say, look how many millions we sold, and we're all sold out. And that's all marketing. So uh, They've been doing it constantly with this, with the, the, the NES, uh, the mini NES, the, the, the super NES, the one that's coming out, the SNES, like that. And then, and then with this, like since these consoles have been coming out, it's just like, oh, we didn't know how, how popular they were going to be. Who are we kidding? They the went all the way back to the Wii. Yeah. Well, the case no. in point in this as well is uh, you caught them in a lie already because mm -hmm. they said that they stopped producing the original NES Mini because the components were hard to find. That's what that's what their excuse was. But then two months later, they announced the, uh, the SNES Mini. Different components. Completely different. So... <laughs> <laughs> no. They... It's, it's just a bad... It's a bad look, but it's not something... It's not a headline. You know, like, yeah. we're covering it, but nobody's nobody's asking you know why does nintendo still do this and that's why they still get away with it yeah because and, they, and, well it's it, and i think it's the nostalgia factor of nintendo i think that people are still just like on their knees for nintendo and they just they can't see like the shit that they're doing like, and let's not because they're just they're just they they just bow down to the, the god that is nintendo let's not forget that i mean nintendo still makes a hell of a fucking game like it's tough i guess they do. It's just few and far between. Yeah. Once again, I mean, like I said, I'm planning on getting a Switch. I've got Zelda. That's the definite buy. That's the reason I want to play this whole thing in the first place. But after Zelda, I mean, I'm thinking Splatoon, but I'm not really the the next game I really want to buy is either going to be Odyssey, Mario Odyssey, or I mean, and the No More Heroes game. Other than that, like, there's nothing. There's no other killer apps that are really drawing me to it, and especially coming this close into the holidays. I don't think there's anything me personally that I'm sold on. I mean, like Splatoon seems okay. Uh, that Rabbids game seems pretty cool, but I mean, nothing that I'm like, you know, like I said, I don't feel, I don't feel like, like how Zelda makes me feel. Like yeah. I want to play Zelda, but the, I don't want to really. The play new Zelda. Mario looks fun too, but the problem yeah. is, is that like, I still don't feel like that's enough games. I mean, the reason why we build these computers that do all this awesome gaming is because we know that like we'll easily buy like twenty plus titles a year easily right to play we'll them. be able to justify our purchase yeah, right. and like you know at my playstation i only have a handful of games for but again they're the exclusives but they're the they're amazing like you you cannot compare uh zelda to uncharted or the last of us or apples and oranges you can't i but they're no like even then like if you're like i'm gonna sit down and play a video game and i want to be entertained for for a while and i want to be told a good story uh, like with good gameplay like if that's i mean because that's the thing with like uncharted like it's a pretty simple game just like mm -hmm. mario is a pretty simple game and yeah right. like i mean but one is uh, yeah they are different game types but like that's the thing is like you can't like what do you that... think jared jared you you own a switch and you played zelda obviously what would you compare it to comparing it to a triple, another triple a title that's from another system? I think it, I think you can, I think it on its own merits, it stands as one of the uh, best games of the year. Um, but it's, you can't, it's not the same. It's just not the that's same. That's what like, I'm I, thinking. It, it, I, it's an experience that I think everybody should have, uh, with the Zelda game because it's just phenomenal. But at the same time, you look at something that's story driven, uh, from Sony and that's phenomenal as well. And I think that they can both stand on their own. Um, without without being compared, what can you compare? Uh, what can you compare Zelda to as far as like the genre? So you're thinking open world. Would you compare it to something like The Witcher or um, say Skyrim? What would you you would you say that that's it's better more, than those? It has more in common with Skyrim uh, than The Witcher. I think. How I mean, is that? I'm putting you on the spot. Sorry. 
because I mean, you're, you're I think, just the only owner. I think so. the Witcher. I think the Witcher is more story driven, and I think that has uh, as to where um, as to where um, Zelda was more like you know they put you in a sandbox box and you figure it out. And that's okay. kind of like um, Skyrim uh, as well. Obviously, Skyrim had more to do in it, um, but um, so you could still soak a hundred hours into each one. Uh, okay. Each one. So I think that's where I think that's what I would compare it to mostly. Um, but like I said, it's so it's difficult because it stands on its own as kind of I don't know. It's it's <laughs> it's really strange because it has a ton of nostalgia, uh, but it also does the same things that other games have done, but it feels fresh and new. Okay, I, I guess uh, I guess that's how I would say it. But uh, other than that game, really tough to to say to go buy one um, because it's got to, it really annoys me that it's got the uh, it's got the Nintendo tax on it, so an extra ten dollars for these indie games, mm-hmm. and the indie games I'm like I can pick it up for three dollars on Steam as to where it's a full purchase on Nintendo Switch, and I'd rather just sit in my office chair and play it. Right. Right. So there's that. I don't know. Let us, yeah, like the the fact that you just have like the one. I mean, there will be more tiles coming, but this uh, comparison, the fact that mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say is just the you have Zelda, which is you know it looks fun. I've watched you play it, Jer. I've watched Ed play it, but he played even he played it on the Wii U. You know what I mean? Like he didn't have to go buy the new console to play it. And they're right? identical. There's nothing different about they those look, two. Yeah, I mean, it looked, I heard there was a better frame rate on the uh, Switch, but that's all I heard. All right. It's not by much. You're not yeah. going to notice. And okay. um. Yeah, and then um, so that doesn't seem like enough of a reason to go, you know, buy no, it, buy the not. console because the games that they're announcing for it, like just right now, um, they've announced another. This brings me to the next story. Um, they've announced L.A. Noir uh, coming to the Switch mm-hmm. in November. Is and, it new? Uh, I mean, and I realize it's VR, like so it's first person, but is it? It's got to be the same game, yeah. It's the same game. It's just uh, it, it's H. They just do. Uh, it says the Switch version of the title is complete. Original game comes with all the downloadable content. Includes enhanced content to include a Joy-Con mode with gyroscope, gesture-based controls, HD rumble, and a new wide over-the-shoulder camera angles. But the problem and con- is- contextual touchscreen. Problem with that is so I have two points on that, which I'm I hate Rockstar for. Uh, the first one is to go along with the Switch, which is. Um, this is this is what this is what we're getting with the switch is they're announcing all these old titles and they're bringing them back like they just announced the, uh, and released Meat Boy for while it, Meat Boy is a fantastic game it's fucking eight years old it's actually a brand new game though it's not no it is a brand new game have you seen the trailer for it by the way Wiggly's in that trailer and it's adorable but uh, it's about the son like of Meat Boy. actually him or just his voice. His voice. Okay. Well, the, he does the he does the narration. I of the am whole aware trailer. of who he what he does for the game. Well, no, I'm saying in this trailer he does the narration of no. the trailer. But yeah, it's a brand new game. I'm looking so, to look this up because yeah. I don't... But the thing is, I mean, you can't really shit on Nintendo for that one per se because it's coming out for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. So I mean, it's not like an HTC Vive. So I wouldn't just put that one on the Switch. It's not their fault they're getting it. Yeah, but but it, okay. it is a step in the right direction for Rockstar working with Nintendo, though. I mean, you got to give that credit. But at the um, same time, did you, did you guys play L.A. Noir? Am I the only one who played it? Did you guys play it? I played yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's There okay. was some naked bodies up in that game. And you're going to tell me you're going to put that, like, VR on a kid's console? Mm-hmm. Bayonetta? Uh, Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2 were on and Nintendo, even though there wasn't nudity. But I'm trying to think Straight of a Nintendo game. Straight up right? naked people. Now they were dead. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but okay. Here's the other point. Why the fuck are they doing this? Why are they bringing this back and not just fucking releasing Red Dead Redemption on the on the current <laughs> consoles? <laughs> because Rockstar it's hates different. us all. And also, this is a different team. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, L.A. Noir was done. Bondi still around. Noir was done by Rockstar. Team also. Bondi. Australia, I think, yeah. Otherwise known as Team Bondi. Yeah. And well, okay. And Red Dead is is by uh, Montreal. Who? Which one? So that? They could, no, they Red Dead was um, Red Dead's the update. actual studio, like Rockstar. Yeah. So it's a different team, Jer. Calm your fucking tits. Jer. 
Like you can't, you can take, you can hire anybody to fucking update it for the systems. Well, you're not. We don't know. I'm, listen, listen. Who fucking knows who they hired to make this? I'm just saying <laughs> that Red Dead has several studios across the world that work on specific games. So you're bitching yes. about this not being Red Dead or why Red Dead's not done. This is a, probably a fucking different studio, like it was to begin with. But it's a, okay. But you're bringing up a point that doesn't matter. The game is already fucking done. All they have to do is update it for the consoles, and then and then you're good yeah, to go. So like, you just not... hired someone to just do something really easy. Like I don't understand why you're bitching about Red Dead. Why is that because the, the thing? fact that that would be just as easy? No, it wouldn't. That's a bre- red. Well, you need Red a Dead. Tough fucking game. Are you talking about Red Dead One? Yes. yes. Oh, I, was, I thought you were talking about Red Dead Two. That's my bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, well, you taught that's a brand new fucking game. <laughs> my bad. No, Mis- Red Dead that, That's a misunderstanding on my part. Yeah, my bad. That's my bad. <laughs> There's got to be some politics playing behind that because that's the only Rockstar game that hasn't been released. Um, besides the Warriors, that's the only other one I could think of that hasn't been released on PC. What about what about the Manhunt? Was that was that Manhunt's on PC? Is the it? first one is. No. The second one, I don't know what they did, but the second one was they did that weird. That was the main censored one, so you really couldn't find an uncensored version of Manhunt Two. No. Yeah, that was the game where they wanted to slap an adults-only rating on it. So uh, the way Rockstar worked around it to get the M rating was during the kill scenes. They would, like, it's since it was, like, a VHS-style game, they would, like, blur the images, kind of. So, Boo. You know, there's yeah. a big rumor that they're uh, they're working on uh, Midnight. Um, Midnight Club? Midnight Club. And those are on PC. Uh, uh, speaking of release dates, our last story. Only two. To- Sorry. I'm... Um, Another Rockstar game. I wish they'd make another one for. Bully uh, Two is probably going to be made. Hopefully, someday. Yeah. Uh, we're get, We got a release date for Pinball FX Three. If you've yeah, made, if you've made it this far in the show, congratulations. Just, uh, <laughs> congrats. It's a long one, uh, but also, uh, this will be a a game that's in heavy rotation with the Eight Bit Geek. We will have tournaments set up. We will mm-hmm. be doing multiplayer. Uh, we'll have leaderboards. Uh, just just be there with us. It's a free-to-play title. You get probably two or three tables with it. You're going to have to download it if you're going to want to play with us uh, because we're going to be doing some fun shit with it. Uh, Doug, Kevin, and I have like almost all the boards for um, Pinball FX2. Yep. They're going to transfer over to the third one. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a lot of ton of fun. It's gonna be something uh, to get involved with for the Eight Bit Geek. So make sure you download it when it comes out. It is coming out September twenty sixth on the PS four, Xbox One, and PC. Yes. Uh, I don't know yet if there is cross platform leaderboards yet, but hopefully they didn't say. Hopefully there is. Uh, we'll be we'll we'll be playing it on the PC. Uh, most if we do like a tournament, I want to be I want to be an announcer. I want to be a spectator. One of the spectator announcer person. People. So I want to be like, look at him, look at him, look at him. He's hit. Oh yeah, hit those balls. Hit that. <laughs> hit that ball. Yeah, slap that <laughs> ball. Slap that ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, slap. Look at. Look at. Look at. Look at. There goes. There goes. Tilt. 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 <laughs> I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I want to beat every score Jared puts up. Tilt and slap. Tilt and slap. <laughs> We're not even playing pinball anymore. <laughs> Is that a technical term? <laughs> Tell the machine to slap the ball. Anyways, that's our show, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking around. Yeah. Uh, until next week, I'm Jeremy. Oh, we're we're gonna do a Q and A, right? Yeah, we're doing. Okay, just, uh, just for the people that are here, uh, we'll stick around. Uh, I'm I'm Doug. I'm Kevin. Until next week, love, hugs, and all that bullshit.